Uh, people can watch the video if they're not didn't make it in class right now. OK. So. Screen one. Here we go. Um, OK, so. We're uh, uh, we this is the second class now talking about processing and. Um, uh, so let me let me just start get going here on some topics and uh, we'll see. I want to give some examples of writing uh, some processing code. And um, so I actually have some examples already uh, done here right along here. And so let me let me talk about those. Perhaps the best way to talk about them is sort of to retype things in here. OK, I want to talk about this one right here. Um, and example call it example 1.1 stroke and fill. Now. Um, OK, we talked a little bit about the size command, so let me begin with that size gives us the size of the graphics window that we're going to be using in that particular processing program. So I'll make the, the window 480 units wide and 270 units high. So that's what we're doing here with size. Now background, I don't think I talked much about that. The background of the window can be anywhere between white and black or a gray level in between, which is all I'm talking about now is gray levels. Uh, 255 255 is a completely white background. So if I put 255 in here. The background is going to be white. And if I have zero in there, the background is going to be black and I'll show that. Uh, and then anything in between gives me a gray level. So let me show that I'll hit run here. I should get that window. Here's the window and it's completely white there. And then I said if I put zero, it's black. Now if I put. Um, let's say. Uh, 180, it'll be. A gray level. So let me run it again. And there we have a gray. So the number in here, zero being black, 255 being white, there that makes a total of 256 um, possible levels of, of black to white gray. Uh, 256 is the representation by an 8-bit uh, word. 8 bits is the number of, of possible values that an 8 bit word can take is 256. 1 bit is 2 levels, 2 bits is 4 levels, 2 squared, 3 bits is 2 cubed, 8 levels, 4 bits is 2 to the 4th, 16 levels. You go all the way up 2 to the 8th is 256. There are 8 levels because there are 256 different numbers that you can represent with an 8 bit binary word. OK, so now so I have background. OK, stroke. Stroke determines the width of the line that is used when we're drawing graphical elements when we're drawing rectangles, squares, ellipses. So, and stroke zero here is indicating that. Uh, 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 I mean, superficially we say, gee, we're drawing a line which has no width. And you may have seen stroke before if you use Adobe uh, Adobe drawing tools, Adobe Illustrator, for example. I believe that you use a stroke command in, in Adobe Illustrator. I haven't used Adobe Illustrator in, in, in years, so I don't remember everything about Illustrator. Fill is when we draw something. What is the gray level 
that fills. We draw a rectangle. Fill tells determines the gray level that is that fills the rectangle. Fills 250 or 150. And then we have rectangle. Now here's the rectangle I'm drawing. And 50-50 uh, is the upper left-hand corner of the rectangle. And then the width of the rectangle is 75. And the height of the rectangle is 100. Close paren, semicolon. So let's see what this gives us here. So we're drawing a rectangle. Drawing, here's our window. We're drawing a rectangle in the window. Now notice that the background is 180. So if we fill the rectangle with 150, it's not going to be all that different. Let's run. There we go. So here's a rectangle. Here's the background. I could change the background of the rectangle to be completely white. But putting in 255 and uh, run it again. So there we go. You might wonder what happens if I put in a number that is not 0 to 255, like I put in 256. Do we get an error? What happens? And we get black. Now, um, so uh, now as a computer guy, what this tells me is that we start with black at zero, and we get increasingly brighter gray levels, then we go up to 255. Then when we get to 256, we cycle back to zero again. And then we go through new gray levels until um, we get up probably to 511, might be black again. Um, and uh, so, um, or not 5.11, what's a, uh, well, let's, let's hear, let's just do this. And, and rather than just speculate. Okay, we notice that 256 is black again. So let me add 100 to this. So that would be like, uh, uh, possibly putting a hundred in. Let's do a hundred. Here's a hundred. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, three fifty-six. Sorry, I wanted to add a hundred to two fifty-six. Two fifty-six gives us. I want to write three fifty-six. Three, and then fifty-six. Let's try running this. Okay, now why I'm getting kind of a blue here. So this is giving me a color. And um, so let's just keep going with this. Let's put 500 in. Okay, now um, I think I know what's going on here, but it's sort of past the, the, the complication of the lesson. So we notice if we put something other than the range 0 to 255, what we get here is potentially unpredictable. So let me go back to 255, 255, and run it. 255 should give us a white background. That's what I have here, which is I'm copying this. Okay, so um, Phil, I said, determines the gray level here. Now let me put 255 in for that. That would be the largest value I can get there. Okay, so I have white box and a white background, and we notice you're seeing just the outline of the box. And the width of this line is determined um, potentially here by stroke. Let me change stroke. Let me change stroke to 10. See what happens. Now I'm not seeing anything here, okay? Any change at all. Stroke 10, fill 255. Let me put 100. 
Okay, so that's not affecting that right there. And uh, fill 255 rectangle here. Now, when we come across and we don't know exactly what it means or uh, we uh, we uh, you know don't uh, uh, never used it before, don't remember. Uh, we can go back into see if I have it here somewhere. I don't see it here. Okay, let me go back into Safari here. We can go into the processing.org. Let me go there. And then we can go look down here uh, where reference, and then we can look for the, uh, uh, the stroke uh, command to see what stroke does. And uh, without searching through here, structures, shape, vertex, images. I don't want to spend a lot of time. There are a lot of things to search through here, but maybe output, maybe there's something that uh, were obviously, here's what I typically do. I just go into Google and I'll type um, processing stroke. And the stroke command has an open and close. Uh, and, now, and then I hit return, stroke, language, processing three, no stroke, set stroke. OK, so this tells us how to use the stroke command. So. And uh, that's what I do. I Google it. OK, now let's continue on with these examples. You know, this is a set of notes that I put together actually several years ago. I might I might email it to these to you guys if I think that they're useful. Um, OK, now we're back to this here, so we're done with this one let me close this now we're this was example 1.1 stroke and fill stroke zero fill okay let me start with a new box here Okay, stroke and fill. Now, no fill. What does no fill do? Well, rather than type this all, example, no fill. Copy. Let me paste it in here. So, okay, size, we know what that does. Background, we know what that does. No fill leaves the shape. Let me make this wider with only an outline. So that is like making... Um, fill 255 and background 255 so we only see the outline so this leaves the shape with only an outline and um, i set stroke to zero and i draw an ellipse so let's see what happens here so there we are here's our background box and uh, here is our Ellipse with, with if the this is the uh, uh, this determines the position and the width of the width width of the of the ellipse in the x and y direction. So here, let me just change this to a hundred, so we can see what that does. There's one hundred. Okay, here is this thing. Let's do run. So we see it moves to the right. Now, if I change this to 100, then it should move down from that position. So we've now moved a box which which was located at 60, 60, and moved it down 
here now the question of course is is this does this represent the center of the circle or something else so let's just put in zero and see what we get so what i'm doing here is i'm doing experiments with the numbers to see what happens this can be really useful to do this so notice i put in zero zero it looks to me like we're drawing the circle and the center of the circle is at zero zero so this is the center of the circle okay let me go back and put in 10 100 here and then 100 so now it'll be centered at zero zero it'll be 100 wide i mean it, this will be the, the center of the circle will be at 100, 100, and the, this is the width in the x direction and the width in the y direction. Okay. So um, this is the width. So the width here is 100, and the width here is 100. The center is at 100, 100. And this is what we do no fill. Now, if I do fill, and I put in 100, let's see what happens. The function fill int does not exist. Okay. Let me go back here. Okay. So, um, Let's, um, so we have size, background, 250, 250 uh, 255, no fill, is a shape with only an outline, stroke, and we're drawing a circle, which is an ellipse with the X and Y uh, radii to be both the same. If I put in 50 here, we're saying that the X, width on the ellipse is 50 and the y width is 100 so x width is 50 y width is 100 okay so that now gives me this what this box here is doing okay so we know what size does we investigated background and then fill no fill uh, what's going on here? Um, this is that determines the color or the gray level that goes inside what we draw. So we're drawing an ellipse. This determines the color what that goes in there. And um, and we notice here that fill begins with a lowercase f. So when I put an uppercase here. I was told that the command does not exist. So unfortunately, this is the way all computer languages are, that even a mistake in whether your character is uppercase or lowercase uh, can cause the, a command to fail. So if I put in fill with a lowercase, then put in 100. What do I get? I have my ellipse with 50, height 100. It's filled with 100, which is a dark gray level. If I put fill zero, it would be black. Um, and uh, so notice that putting an uppercase F here would give me an error. Let me do it again, but I fill like that, and I get function fill int does not exist. So this is a, this kind of thing can drive uh, people crazy with writing um, computer, and that you have to get all the spelling and all the uh, appropriate syntax exactly right, or the program does not work properly. Now, you get an outright error. It's, you can often, it's relatively easy to go back and fix. 
but sometimes what you have is a legitimate statement in the language, but it's not the statement you think it is. So you think you're doing the right thing and you end up doing the wrong thing, and uh, which gives you a, a really annoying uh, debugging problem when you're trying to debug the program. You're trying to figure out why the program isn't giving you the result you expect. And it's because you every every command you have written in the in the code is a legitimate command. It's just not doing exactly what you expected to do. And uh, which are frequently the uh, the most difficult kinds of programming errors to find. Uh, and I'll just give you another depressing piece of information. Uh, certainly in the beginning here, when you're first learning programming, you're going to spend 90% of your time not writing the program, but debugging it, trying to figure out why it's not working right. And uh, that, um, so I think that's probably the biggest reason why people actually don't go into uh, computer science is because uh, programming can be so frustrating. And um, it's uh, like learning a new language. And uh, except you're learning a new language and you don't get the grammar and the syntax completely right, people you're speaking to can usually figure out what you're trying to say. In a computer program, that doesn't work. You make even the small small error in your code, and the code either doesn't work at all or doesn't give you the right result, and you can't figure out why. Okay, so that's no fill. Now, so this is example 1.2. So let's go to example 1.3 here. Okay, we're going to talk about RGB color. So let me uh, let me copy this and paste it in over here. Okay, I've been talking about gray levels, but uh, we can get red, green, blue RGB color. Now notice I have a background 255. No stroke. And um, OK, no stroke, stroke, no stroke. Um, bright red is this. Dark red is this and pale red is this. So let's look at these. Background 255 is the white background. Um, no stroke. Don't, we're not exactly quite sure what's going on with that yet. Uh, and we can investigate the command. We could go into Google and look and see what no stroke does. And, um, but I'm not going to do that at the right now. Um, bright red. So if we, it's fill, if we put in a single number, it gives us a gray level. But if we put in three numbers, the first number is the brightness of red. The second number is the brightness of green. And the third number is the brightness of blue. Red, green, blue. Red is 255, green is zero, blue is zero. So this will give us a fully bright red as, as a fill of the ellipse. Okay, we look down here. Fill 127, 0, 0, 127 is midpoint of between 0 and 255. So we're getting sort of a, a, a medium red. Uh, they're calling it dark red here uh, for this ellipse. So here's an ellipse centered at this point, 16 by 16. So this is a circle with a diameter of 16. Here's another circle located with this center and another circle with this center. So notice that 127.00 gives us a dark red. Uh, we're going to draw it in a minute. And um, 
pale red is 255, 200, 200. Now, if this were 200, 200, 200, it would be a light gray. Uh, but by making the red level a little bit brighter, what we get is a pale red, uh, a red tint on the light gray. So let's look at this. So here we are. Notice this thing is way too small. Should have done this bigger. And I think I'll do that bigger. Let's put um, size up here. Size. Let me make it a square 400 by 400. So now we have that, but we still have these three small circles. Let me make um, the first circle. Let me do it at 50. Let me do it at 100, 100. And 50, 50. I'll put this at 200, 200. Fifty fifty. And let me do this at two hundred, three hundred. Oh, no, I I'm, I was filled in the wrong thing there. And it undo undo there. I want to do this two hundred, three hundred. Fifty fifty. So I'm going to be drawing three circles. They're going to be larger at, at uh, more separated locations. So here are the three circles. Bright red, dark red, pale red. So uh, like I said, notice we get the pale red. If this were 200, 200 here, and I do it, we'd have a white circle. I mean a gray circle, sorry. So by making this one, the red component of the three numbers a little bit larger, we get a pale red. What would happen if I made green 255? Okay, we have now pale green. So you see that? I'll go back to 200. And I made blue 255. OK, so now if I did also did green at 255. I get a combination of blue and. Uh, and green here and aqua. If I made this 100. We had this, so you can see by changing each one of these three numbers, we are getting uh, a different color. So we can, can we can determine the color we get in the fill using the red, green, and blue numbers. Now this is exactly the way JPEG images work. I'm sure you're probably familiar with JPEG format images. Usually when you look at a photograph online. Um, the one of the the common um, types of photographs you look at are JPEGs or PNGs, which I call pings. So you have uh, and JPEG gives you exactly 255 red levels, 255 green levels, 255 blue levels. 
this is exactly the color range with a JPEG image, 0 to 255 on each of red, green, and blue. And then you can compute how many different colors that gives you, right? It's because there are 256, there are actually 256 levels because you can go zero is the first level up to 255. So that's 256. So the number of different colors you get in a JPEG image is 255 cubed because you have 255 red, 255 blue, 255 green. So the number of different colors is 256 times 256 times 256. And you can see, you compute that number and it tells you exactly how many different colors you can get in a JPEG image. And processing uses exactly the same color scheme for RGB. You can actually use different color schemes in processing, but let's do, let's stick with RGB for now. So, um, you know, if you have variables in for the red, green, and blue, blue components, you can actually change the color fill of an object. Um, and um, so, no, no stroke means we're not drawing a line here around the circle. There's no dark boundary on the circle. I could change this to stroke there, lowercase, and I could do stroke five, for example, and let's see what we get there. Notice we get a boundary, a dark um, uh, perimeter on the items that we draw. So no stroke. Notice we put a lowercase n and an uppercase s here. But there, uppercase, no stroke, there, run, and we get no boundary at all around the circles. So again, if you don't get this right, if you don't make this uppercase, you're going to get an error. It's telling us right off that the function no stroke does not exist. And I do the function no stroke does not amazing, okay? So that's an ex another example. You don't get the syntax exactly right you get an error in the in the program. OK, so that's example one, three. I think I've got two more examples to go here. So. That's an like example one, four alpha transparency. Let me copy this. OK, no fourth argument means 100% opacity. What is this? What am I talking about here? No fourth argument means 100% opacity. OK, let's look at fill. So we. Um, first I do fill 002. Let's run the program and then see what we get and then talk about it. OK, hey, another small box. I wish they didn't do it this way, but. OK, fill. Um, 00255. Red, green, blue. Fill is blue. We're drawing a rectangle. Remember on a rectangle, this is the upper left hand corner. Um, and. Um, this um, then gives me the width and the height. 255, OK. Uh, this, there's a fourth number here. So red, green, blue, and then another number. Red, green, blue, and another number. Red, green, blue, and another number. So what is, uh, what's going on here? Now, this might be a good place to show you another trick that programmers use. So say I only want to show you what happens when I run this first couple commands. But I don't want to delete all these commands. So the way I deal with that when I'm programming and I want to temporarily put in a statement 
which does not execute. I do what programmers call commenting it out. In other words, I make it a comment statement. If you remember, I said that comment statements are statements that are not executed um, when the program runs. So by making them comment statements, I effectively remove them from the execution of the program. But I'm leaving them in the listing for my code so I can go back and easily re-enter those statements. So I'm commenting all of these out. Now I run. Notice I'm getting a blue rectangle. So red, green, blue, 255 is all blue. And um, so I'm drawing this rectangle, which is width 240, height 200. And I'm filling it with a very bright blue. Okay, now let's see what happens. We're going to execute these commands. Uh, and we have a fourth number, 255. So let me uncomment these two statements. Run. Huh, well, I, I have the dark blue rectangle, which I wrote, which I drew right here. And then over top of that, I have red. So what's coming, what's happening here? Well, red is 255.00. That'll be the fill on this rectangle. And then I put 255 for the opacity, the alpha transparency. And 255 is completely opaque. And then I draw a second rectangle that has this fill beginning at the upper left hand corner 00, 480 wide and 40 down. So upper left hand corner and um, 480, 40, like that. Well, let's let's see here. Let's uh, let's change this. First of all, let's make this the same as this 240 by 240. Now run. So notice I'm getting the same because this tells us that this rectangle is 240 wide and 40 high, so 240 wide and 40 high. And when I had this as 480, it uh, also ended here, right here. It didn't draw this any wider. So that's interesting and uh, it might be worthwhile to investigate that a little bit. But let's look at the, right now I'm talking about this transparency. Transparency 250, 255. I said this is completely opaque. Let me make this 100. Let's see what this does. Okay, so this gives me this bright red but it has a transparency. That means what is behind the red is showing through. And what is behind the red is blue. If I made this zero, I wouldn't see that at all. So I'm drawing this rectangle, but it's completely transparent by putting a zero in this fourth number. So I'm not seeing it at all. So, um, so I get a bright red that's completely transparent, which is then a, the effect is to do nothing. And I have a drawing a rectangle with the upper, at the corner, zero, zero up here, making it 480 wide. Then, now notice that it's wider here, this box is a small box, so we're not getting, we wouldn't be even seeing the full rectangle. Let's make a larger box there and see what happens. Size. Uh, 
Let's do 400, 400. Let's do 500, 500. Comma, 500. They are a larger box. Now draw it. So now notice here what's happening. You can see this full box here, which is 480, 40, 480, 40 down. OK, the box um, here in this rectangle is completely transparent. What happens if I make this 100? So it's partially transparent. Notice I'm getting that red, but transparent red. It's like looking through a, uh, a transparency at the blue box underneath. And here, the background is gray. We never mentioned what we want the background to be on this rectangle. So it automatically has a default value, which we, which is a gray value. So we're drawing the blue. Over top of that, we're drawing a transparent red box, which is larger. We're getting this. So uh, that's pretty interesting. OK. Now let's go back and let's investigate this here. Let me let me make this back. What was it originally? 255. OK, so here we have a red, but it's completely opaque. You can't see through it at all. So we are drawing a red rectangle over top the blue rectangle. No, it's opaque, and so we don't see any of the blue underneath. 75% opacity. So this is a red with tr partially transparent. 0, 050, 480. This is, uh, um, who knows? Let's look at this. What's it going to give us here? Oh, I forgot. Look at that. I forgot to uncomment. OK. So here is this. And so we're filling it with dark red and it's partially transparent. So 75% opaque. The rectangle is 0, 050, 480, 40. So same size rectangle as this, but the starting point is not at 0, 0, it's at 0, 050. So 0, 050 would be right here. So that's where it's starting. Okay, let's look at this. We got a more transparent rectangle. And now let's look at this. And we have an even more transparent rectangle. So gives you an idea of um, opacity and transparencies. This is the fourth number in the fill command. OK. So with that, let me go to the next and final uh, example for today's class, Zug. What is a Zug, you might wonder? Here, let me make it a little bit bigger here. There, Zug. Some I didn't get it all. Let me try again. Example, Zug, copy. There we go. OK, here we have a box, background, <coughs> ellipse mode. I haven't talked about ellipse mode and rectangle mode. I'll be doing that later in the course. Um, talking about those modes, but so I'm putting it in there today uh, without explaining it. 
And of course, if you wanted to figure out what those are, you can Google processing ellipse mode or processing rect mode here. Uh, so ellipse mode center, rect mode center. And what these do is they change the meaning of the first two numbers here. Instead of meaning the upper left hand corner, it determines where the center of the rectangle is. Similarly, um, telling us uh, something similar with the ellipse. And now we have drawing lines. So I'm actually doing an entire sketch here where I'm, let me run it and you'll see what I'm talking about. So this is kind of like a, a dumb little robot. Here's a head, two eyes, a body, and two legs. So we have a big rectangle, I mean a big uh, ellipse, a big circle, where uh, the X and Y diameters are the same. Now, looking at all these ellipses I draw, this one has an X and Y diameter of 60-60. So that's probably this one right here. The other two ellipses would be the eyes. Now we can check that. How would I check it? I'll comment these statements out. There. So now run. And the eyes disappear when I comment this out. OK. So you see here, uh, sort of a simple application of commenting out statements in a program. I could have done that with this to see, to see which ellipse draws the head. Now we draw a rectangle here. That rectangle is probably the body, right? I can check that. And indeed, the body disappears. And these two lines are the legs right here. Okay, so this is I'm drawing a, a, a sketch. And um, now, as we go along here, I'm going to show you how we can animate a sketch and uh, but not today uh, i think i'm just out of out of time for today i've gone through these five example programs which are not duplicated these are different examples that i talk about in the videos for the class for this week so please go ahead and look at those so i'm doing something not covered in those uh, in those videos mentioned or linked in the syllabus. So this is something separate and um, the uh, uh, so you can play with this and maybe even try to do your own sketch if you so choose. So I think that'll be it for today. Um, and uh, you might notice here that um, one, one little thing is I'm drawing this rectangle for the body first, and then I draw the head. So the head actually covers part of the rectangle for the body. So the, whatever I draw last covers up whatever I draw earlier. So you might want to play around with that a little bit too. Okay, so uh, let me see now when I started uh, there were no students. Let's see how many of you guys have signed in. There we go. So, OK, I have I have a few people here. And uh, however, it's a relatively modest number. Uh, I wonder if people haven't restarted after the break. <laughs> there might be people still on break. Um, and um, or or why I'm not getting more people here in class, not as many as I was getting in the first part of the semester. OK, so that's the end of my uh, lecture for today. And let me see if there are any questions here. I have a I have another meeting going on, a faculty meeting going on right now. 
So I'm going to jump over there if there are no questions. OK, well, all you wonderful people here. Uh, thanks for attending class today. And uh, it's now almost seven o'clock in the morning for me. So let me go see what's going on with my other meeting and I'll see you next week. Look at the homeworks, OK? Don't forget to do the homework. Um, Thank you. OK, you guys are welcome. Okay. Thank you. Hey, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.